Welcome everyone. Over the past month, we've been taking time to reflect on the past two years. We've been recognizing those we lost, honoring our public health and healthcare workers, promoting our housing, food, and rental relief efforts, and thanking our essential workers. It's been an opportunity to appreciate the work of so many in confronting this ongoing crisis. We're concluding our Remembrance Month with Food Security Week, an issue I've been worried about and focused on long before the pandemic arrived. Food Security Week highlights individuals and organizations that have provided necessities and other resources to people and families in need throughout the pandemic. This week, I, along with our food security team, visited La Villa in Gaithersburg and had a chance to meet the restaurant owner, Edwin Abreza, and his staff. They have provided meals to thousands of members of the community, and we had a roundtable discussion with our food security network partners there. We then went to Yad Yehuda Choice Food Pantry, which specializes in providing kosher meals. The amount of food they distributed, they said, has increased 450% during the pandemic. Then we went over to Silver Spring Christian Reform Church and their food pantry, which has seen a 250% increase in demand for food from before the pandemic. These two pantries are among the over 100 food assistance providers in our county, many of whom are volunteer-based. Food assistance providers have distributed over 41 million pounds of food and over 27 million prepared meals to the county's most vulnerable populations during the pandemic. The county could not have provided this level of help without the many food assistance providers whose work and commitment made this possible. As part of my FY23 recommended budget, we've proposed an Office of Food Resilience that will continue the county government's partnerships and our efforts that we've established during the last 24 months. I'm also recommending enhancing grant funding for food assistance programs and $4 million to directly provide food to individuals and families most in need. COVID highlighted food insecurity in our county, but it's not just a part of the pandemic. So we must continue to invest our resources and build coalitions and partnerships and support our community partners to ensure that no one in Montgomery County goes hungry. COVID rates are low, but the BA2 subvariant is now the dominant strain. According to the CDC, our community level currently remains at low, but we continue to monitor increasing cases of the new BA2 subvariant, which is now the dominant coronavirus strain in the United States. BA2 has caused between 51% and 59% of all new COVID-19 infections throughout the nation for the week ending March 26th, and that's up from an estimated 39% of all new infections from just the week before. The hardest hit region was the Northeast, where BA2 caused more than 70% of all cases. The FDA has expanded emergency authorization for a second booster. With the potential rise in cases due to this new variant, vaccinations and boosters remain more important than ever. This week, the FDA announced the emergency use authorization of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines to allow adults 50 and older to get a second booster shot four months after they received their first booster shot. The CDC also noted that adults who got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine as their primary shot and then got a first booster shot at least four months ago, may now get an additional booster of Pfizer or Moderna's vaccines. As with other updated booster recommendations, our county-operated clinics will start offering the fourth booster when we get written guidance from the Maryland Department of Health, which we just received. There are plenty of options in this community, and we urge everyone who is eligible to get the additional booster. Go into govaxmoco.com for more information on where to get your shot. This is really important. It is critical that people who are not boosted at least get their booster shot. And if you've been boosted and it's more than four months ago, you should get your second one. I wanted to take a moment to update you on collaboration with the schools, the police department, and the county council regarding modifications to the Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, of the Community Engagement Officer Program. Last year, an MOU between the schools and the police department established community engagement officers to replace school resource officers. The MOU was developed with input from students, teachers, and administrators, and police, and the MOU was signed in August 2021. That ended the role of police in school discipline, which was something they weren't supposed to be doing anyway. 
This MOU was based on the plan that we would have additional social workers and psychologists based in our schools who would be able to work with students and also provide support to MCPS security staff. Due to a nationwide staffing shortages for social workers, fulfilling these positions has been slower than expected, and MCPS has not been able to place them in the schools as planned. In light of the increasing incidents in schools and the inability to enact the planned alternative, that MOU is currently being modified, again with input from students, teachers, administrators, and police. In addition, I've been meeting with and hearing from multiple parent and student advocates and other elected officials, as well as school superintendent, Dr. McKnight, to inform the actual MOU development process. MCPS has been crystal clear that they need the additional flexibility in the short term, as they have seen a rise in serious incidents, ghost guns, and other challenges in the schools right now. I support their need and their request for flexibility. I want to be clear that the changes to the MOU will not change the basic tenant that officers are not involved in school discipline, nor will they be patrolling the halls. They will be available at different times in the day to deal with issues that are criminal and which would normally require calling a police officer to the school. Weapons, sexual assaults, gang activity, for example. The revised MOU is still in a working draft form and is being informed by public input. I do believe that this document should be made available to the public, but that decision needs to be made in consultation with MCPS and the County Council, who are also reviewing the proposed agreement. We will also be receiving regular updates about how the program is actually functioning, and we are hopeful that the schools will soon be able to hire the additional staff to support the mental and emotional well-being of our students. If you or anyone you know is a qualified social worker and would be interested in this important job to help our students, I encourage you to apply through MCPS's employment website. The 2022 Maryland General Assembly is wrapping up in less than two weeks, and we're receiving a lot of good news out of Annapolis. Last week, the Capital Budget Subcommittee of the Maryland House Appropriations Committee recommended $61.5 million in new and additional funding for projects throughout Montgomery County. The funds, together with funds appropriated previously by the Maryland Senate, assure that key Montgomery County projects will be able to make significant progress in the upcoming fiscal year. We appreciate the work of the entire Montgomery County House and Senate delegations during this year's General Assembly session. We're grateful to Mark Corman, House Delegation Chair and Chair of the House Appropriations and Transportation and Environment Subcommittee, and House Majority Leader Eric Ludke for working with our House Delegation and the County to ensure the County's needs were met. I'm also pleased that the General Assembly passed legislation on ghost guns this week. I'm grateful for the leadership of State, State's Attorney Brian Frosch, Senator Susan Lee, Senator Will Smith and Delegate Leslie Lopez and Delegate David Moon to get this bill over the finish line. Ghost guns are a problem in Montgomery County and throughout the state as well as the nation. And we have to do everything we can to prohibit guns that can't be traced and can be obtained in the mail and are simple enough for even a child to put together. We have to keep these out of the hands of people. Um, if you go to buy a gun, regular gun, you need a permit, license, and the gun has a serial number and you have to buy it from a regular gun shop that checks all these things. You can buy a ghost gun, which is basically a dis disassembled version of an otherwise working gun. And because it's disassembled, you don't need a license, you don't need a permit, and you don't need to buy it through a registered and licensed gun shop. This is nonsense. There is no reason in the world why, because it's disassembled, it shouldn't go through the same process as another gun. It is easy enough for a child to put together, and it just allows people to get unregistered weapons into the hands of people who aren't collectors, into the hands of people who actually mean to do harm. I hope Governor Hogan will not veto this legislation and ensure its passage. With all the negative attention on the Oscar ceremony this week, there was some good local news. Gaithersburg native and Quince Georgia graduate Jared Bush won an Oscar for the Best Animated Film as the writer and director for the film Encanto. Congratulations to Mr. Bush and I hope his accomplishment serves as an inspiration for MCPS students and all of our county residents who work in the film and arts industry. 
Finally, as we conclude March in Women's History Month, I just want to take a moment to publicly express my gratitude to all the women I get to work with throughout county government for their service to our residents. I also want to thank the Montgomery County Commission for Women, Montgomery County Women, and all of the departments, communities, and businesses who have taken the time to acknowledge and pay tribute to the Montgomery County women throughout this month. One Montgomery County woman who had a profound influence and legacy throughout this world, as well as an influence on me personally, was environmentalist author Rachel Carson. I wanted to share one of her quotes with you. The more clearly we can focus our attention on all the wonders and realities of the universe about us, the less taste we shall have for destruction. I think that's good advice, particularly in these difficult times. Thanks for tuning in and have a great week.